It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their families. Now here's your host, Ken Rollins. Welcome to Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins here. Today's guest, we're going to talk about Police Week coming up here. I got Jennifer Morris on here and Kim Stevenson. So stay where you are, get you a pen, be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Today we're talking with two ladies that are connected with the we got law enforcement week coming up here on May the 13th and we're going to talk about things that are going to be happening here in Calhoun County for that, that day. Welcome to the show Jennifer Moore. Thank you. No, we're going to do this. Let's get it right. Oh, got it. Kim? Hi. Stevenson. Stevenson. Mm -hmm. Kim, you work for the Oxford PD? Yes. I think I've seen you there a couple of times. A couple of times. What's your job in there? I am the administrative clerk. The what? Administrative clerk. Okay. So when someone needs an accident report or a police report they filed, they come to my office. And or somebody like me coming down and wanting to see some bug somebody or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we get some of those. You, you tolerate people is what you said. We do. The, uh, and you remember the Fraternal Order Police Lodge 4 Auxiliary. Yes. I think I know some of the things about them, but I really don't. Mm -hmm. it. What, are the, what do you guys do? The, is it women behind a badge auxiliary or what is it? The FOP auxiliary? The group was originally Calhoun Women Behind the Badge when we first started in 2011. After we got going, um, we wanted to go under the FOP, so they are our parent, um, the lot, number four lodge is. So we get all the benefits of FOP, just like you do, we pay dues. Um, but as far as what the FOP does, auxiliary, it's mainly the same thing that the regular FOP does. We have, we're a support group. Um, we go around to different police departments if they need us. Whatever they ask for that they need, we try to make sure that we get it or figure out a way that they can get those things that they do need. I know a lot of the guys, as a matter of fact, a disclaimer, I'm a member of the FOP as associate, but you said they were your parents. I said, oh, Lord, Mary, you got some bad parents. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't nothing worse than a bunch of cops to get together to have it to break bread. And uh, we have an awards thing out there every year. You ever been to one of them? No. Where people receive them. It's more like mm -hmm. a roast than it is an award. Oh. And some people really get embarrassed. Do I've they? I've been a part of that. I bet. Uh, I've, I've worked fact, with police. I know how they can be. Well, they put me in an Elvis suit one time. Yeah, and you got to do what they tell you to do. So there you get hurt. They got a lake out there, and you. <laughs> anyhow, you got off track there. But Jennifer, uh, your your part is, uh, and we've talked about some things that, of course, you lost your son, uh, Justin uh, Solahub, who uh, uh, was murdered here back in. It really turned this whole community upside down. And um, you've. You've taken some of that, and I don't know if it's therapy or whatever, but you're involved with the families of the, those slain officers, those that died in the line of duty. What's that agency called? It's, well, our chapter is, of course, the Alabama chapter, and it's the uh, Concerns of Police Survivors. Okay. And we are, of course, state and all over the state, and we help those families get through those times, and we try to help them rebuild yeah. the shattered lives. Yeah. And all of us in this organization have had that loss ourselves. Wow, that's, that's not a group you want to be a part of. But if you are a part of it, it's no good to know there's somebody there. Because people Absolutely. say, people we have say each I know other. how you feel. I know how you feel. No, you don't. No, not really. Yeah, because I, I remember like that when you was kind of numb. You know, you just numb for a few days. and. You go through the motions. Few days, few and weeks. You yeah. said, "Well, when you said this the other day, I, I don't even remember seeing you that day." I mean, it's just like, you know, you're in, a, you're in a fog of some sort. But it's it's good to know that when people do lose uh, lose a loved one like that, that there's support groups there. And what you're doing too, Kim, is uh, the the ladies. I don't know, you didn't probably think about it, but your, your husband is law enforcement, so you probably can relate to the same thing as they do. When they go off, you know the hazards of the job that they do. You're your husband's state trooper, and just walking up to a 
car with tinted windows in the middle of the night. They know they can see you, but you can't see them. And that kind of thing, there's a risk that uh, people don't realize that law enforcement goes through that, that I have an appreciation for because I just can't imagine me walking up saying, you can put your hand on your revolver, your, but you can't take it out. The bad guy sitting in the car can have his out. He's got advantage. Definitely, the yes. And so in the middle of the night, in some little back road somewhere, they, every day they put that uniform on, somebody's got to worry about them. But the, you know, you've got to be concerned about them. You can't let it eat you up. But you guys, that's, that's one of the behind the badge um, support groups. It's like, kind of like in the military, you know, when they're, when they're uh, deployed overseas to know that there's somebody back home taking care of the business here and uh, making sure the hot water tank is on and all this kind of stuff. It, it's a, the support group, uh, the auxiliary does more than that, I'm sure, but Mm -hmm. But for a law enforcement officer to have uh, a group behind him like that, I guess that uh, says a lot to them, too. I'm not a, not a law enforcement officer. Um, now, on the 13th of uh, May, we're going to have a, a lot of things happening here. I, the, we're going to unveil the Alabama Law Enforcement Memorial, and that's going to happen at 12 o'clock. Of course, at 11, they'll feed, them, feed all the people up there that, uh, in the park. And uh, this is 17th in Quintard in Anniston. And then that evening, uh, what is it, 6 o'clock or something like that? 6 p.m. What are y'all going to do this year? That starts the Law Enforcement Memorial. It's okay. the 10th Annual Law Enforcement Memorial. We have several different speakers that will be there. Anjali Thompson, the president, will be, have a speech. Um, you know, we're just remembering the people who have passed away and, and fallen in the line of duty. Um, their families, if they're still living, then uh, we want them to participate. We want them to feel like they're included. We want them to know that we have not forgotten them. We've not forgotten their families. They still are very important to us. Um, that's uh, that's important, then, Jennifer. To, to it's say very we don't important. want people to forget and, Justin Solo, do we? Yeah, and can I say they do a fantastic job yeah. of it. Every year that we've been a part of this, they have brought us in and they feel like our family, they've welcomed us yeah. into their families. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're a great group. Yet by the grace of God, it could be any of them. You know, it can. It could mm -hmm. be any, at any given time. Now one of the things they did is, I was at Oxford Lake the one I had, and they put the candles in the balloons, what do you call them? Yes, we is had the uh, Chinese lanterns. Yeah. We hand wrote everyone's um, end of watch date, and their names. Um, we played music. It was a large Chinese lantern, so all 27 names were able to be on there. And we lit it, and um, we could watch it and listen to the music, and it was, um, it's who, a very powerful who's event. A sci who's, a, who's a technician that figured out how high they would fly and how far they'd go? Because I was watching them, and as they went across the interstate, they were running mighty low, and I was looking at Friendship Road, there's going to be a forest fire. Um, <laughs> we held our breath. I know. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to get some. We uh, we held our breath. We were at first worried about the trees. Yeah. At Oxford Lake, if we could just clear the trees. Yeah. The thought never occurred to us that it would go across <laughs> the interstate to those trees over there. So, so just barely we, missing track. We were trailers. we were holding our breath and <laughs> <laughs> everything went fine. So we need to get with the uh, aeronautical people down at the airport and see if you can get some lift on them things. Yes. Uh, get them up there because I was just oh no oh no and it was uh, I think we had a fire warning out about the time. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. see a candle falling mm -hmm. out there in the woods, and then yeah. yeah mm -hmm. but, but it was uh, so you're gonna do some of that thing. You you gonna call yes. the names of all the names, or yes, you call? they get called one at a time. Um, if there's any family member that's able to be there, we want them to participate. Lay in the rows. Um, okay, hold it right there because we gotta go to a break and gotta pay the bill. You're gonna go to a commercial, come back. Got news that you can use too. So stay there. Be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. We're talking to Kim Stevenson and to Jennifer Morris, and we're talking about Law Enforcement uh, Day on May the 13th, starting at 11, and then at 12 we'll un have the unveiling, and then at 6 p.m. they're going to have the... Uh, you said uh, they will call him. You said they will call the names of all the officers. This is all of them from, what, 1900 or what? Yes. They'll yes. Them. All of them, uh, they're in the state. Mm -hmm. What about if a family's there, do they get to call that loved one's name or is it just y'all continue on? You just gotta um, we would love for them to. We, we want them to be as 
active as they want to be. Do they allow that in uh, Washington? Uh, Jennifer, you've been up there. Does the family call the name? Do they just no? Have the family does not okay. call the name. We have been to Washington, of course, the first year when Justin was honored, and then we did go back last year. Mm -hmm. But the family does not call the name. Yeah, they. Uh, I, I know, like at the 9/11 memorial, you know, they do that every year, and they allow the family members to call their loved one's name and stuff like that. It's just pretty awesome there. But the one thing about uh, getting off track here a little bit, but it's very important for people to know. Uh, Justin Sola have donated how many organs? Four. Four organs. Yes. And in my understanding, there's, there's some, some people are alive today because of that. I mean, it wasn't there's, just organ organs. They was, yeah, there are four people alive. We have only met one, which being his heart recipient. Mm -hmm. He's healthy, he's doing good. We're in wow. constant contact with him. He lives in North Florida and have you heard, uh, have you ever got close enough, to, you, you know, you've been near him, you've met him? I've been near him enough to listen to Justin's heartbeat in his chest, him. yes. Wow. Yes, when we, the first time we met him, which was for Justin's birthday, his first birthday after he had passed, and we met his heart recipient, and with him he brought a stethoscope. Wow. So we were able to listen to his About heartbeat that, on his birthday. Mm -hmm. That's that's amazing, but that, I had some kids on here uh, and, and a teacher from Munford High. They lost a student in Munford, a little girl, and she was a donor. And there's a girl in that school that's alive today because of that other girl. So they introduced a bill to have encourage people to give, uh, to donate their organs on their license and stuff like that, get, uh, getting law enforcement to when they go in for a license, just mm -hmm. encourage them, let them see a video about it. And these kids are like 13 years old, and they, um, when this girl came back to school, they got out in the hallway, just took over the school and prayed. Nobody could do a thing about it. Mm -hmm. And I, let, I tell them this, you know, you got more power than you know you got. Kids can take the school over and pray anytime they want to. Absolutely. As long as it's not led by, mm -hmm. isn't it awesome if we had it everywhere that kids 13 years old realize how powerful they are, that they don't have to worry about the Supreme Court. That's they right. need to pray. I, I told my daughter when she was 12, she said, we can't pray at school. I said, yes, you can. I said, you can pray before you go and get off the bus. You can pray on the bus. You can pray at your locker. You can pray at your desk with your head down. You don't have to jump up on the desk and make a commotion. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm more powerful. I'm giving you permission to pray. And both parents would do that. But these kids, to get those people to, to be donors. They, now they got it out here for getting legislation to do that. How powerful is that? And you know, how can, I, and they was hanging that bill up in the legislature over some details that was not important. And, and I hope it passes today as we're sitting here. But it was about that thing. I thought so much about Justin. And I remember you putting the seeds in of that plaque that went out to the uh, Rose Bowl Parade. Remember all that? Yes, yeah. yes. They had a, they had a, what do you call that? It's a florograph. And it was a picture of Justin and they, they On got one of the, the floats. They got to put the seeds in there to make it, his picture complete to be in the Road Bowl Parade. And I watched them do that. It's, that's pretty awesome. Just a little seed. Oh, yeah, nice. and we got to go yeah. to Pasadena and yeah. see the parade. Yeah, he was uh, in there because of his donor. Uh, mm -hmm. The people at UAB, I think mm -hmm. it was, uh, yes. nominated him, the yes. organ donor. So we got off of the track there, but not only do they, they save lives out there, and I, and I say something to him, uh, your husband's in law enforcement, right? Yes. The, uh, the one thing when I speak to those guys up there is this is from the heart, and I, I think, it, you know, as I came here today, I traveled on a state road, and there may be somebody in the jail that was picked up last night that would be coming down that same road as me mm -hmm. today, drunk, and I may not be sitting here because some officer took him off of the road, him or her, mm -hmm. and put him in jail and saved my life, but they don't even know that, and everybody else that that might, that might have hit. So you have to just assume that somebody's behind bars and they've been for a DUI or something like that, they've saved a lot of lives, possibly. We don't know, but, but that's one of the things that law enforcement does mm -hmm. that they probably don't, people don't give enough credit for is, exactly. is, is uh, you drove out from Jacksonville. You, you live in Jacksonville. Yes. Jennifer, and you come up one of the worst roads today. There's probably 
somebody down on Highway 21 that might have been there, might be behind bars because they're sleeping off drunk. And, uh, and all the other cities that get them, mm -hmm. Weaver and all the rest of them. Um, the reading of the names and everything. That, what I, what I, let me back up. What I want to do is on May the 13th at 6 o'clock, and even during the day, I want to see more people up there that are not connected to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I want to see people from the community, like you, the lady sitting right there in that recliner. I want you to get up and come up there, and by your presence, you will be uh, demonstrating that you support law enforcement. And that's the best way you can do it. When they look out there in the crowd and they see people, citizens, standing there and, and being a part of that ceremony, remembering their loss one, just to see those people, they don't have to say, I care. Mm -hmm. They're doing it by standing there. By being there. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm not in law enforcement. And I hope that every officer that looks out there and sees me knows that I'm there, not because I'm in law enforcement or I got some connection. Mm -hmm. I, it's there because I support them and their families. And, and being in the military, I have to say the families too, because mm -hmm. uh, we, we always figured that the wives were soldiers too. You know, we were soldiers too. And uh, so you, you guys are soldiers too with the, with the cops. Um, the, uh, let's see, what was that? Jennifer, back to you again. I, I gotta get this in. This is, how many years has it been since you lost Justin? How many years? It's been almost five over four. August will be five years. Seems like what? Five weeks, five days? Sometimes it feels like weeks and sometimes it feels like forever. Yeah. To sit and try to think back, looking, talking to him, it feels like it was been forever ago that we got to talk to him and your son Blake, he's get dealing with it pretty good and getting with get along with it. They he does do real good. Of course, now th there's where I see the biggest difference. Blake was half his height when mm -hmm. Justin died. Now Blake is taller than what Justin was when he died. Did they? Uh, and how he looks just like him and how many times I call Blake Justin yeah. by mistake. So there's the biggest. Did Justin mm -hmm. take him to get blue ice cream just for meanness, just to get out of your skin? Just because he could. Yeah. Yeah. And you tell him not to, didn't you? Oh, many times. But they went That on. didn't make a difference. Kim don't have any idea what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. but they she did, doesn't. Justin would take the Blake out and they heck or high water that he's gonna get some blue ice cream. And of course, mm -hmm. he got it on the shirt. She had to get it out. Mm -hmm. And it, it seemed like they intentionally got it on the clothes just, mm -hmm. just to get under mom's skin. Is that, you believe somebody Those are something? memories for Blake, though. <laughs> yeah. Those, yeah. Those are good yeah. memories for Blake. Yeah, I, I, I watch him heartbreaking. And, and now Blake's driving Justin's truck. Uh, oh, no. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I have I've enjoyed this. I hope y'all get the message out there. The folks will come out there on May the 13th at six o'clock. If you don't get out there during the day, at least be there for the, for the ceremony at uh, six. I appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, here we go again. again. Kim, thank you a lot. Thank you. And uh, God bless y'all in uh, what you do. Uh, this is, if y'all don't do it, then who's going to? Um, as I said before, I think the community ought to be the one that steps up and does this stuff. We shouldn't have to honor our own. I do that with veterans, honor my fellow veterans. I'd like to see a community Get more involved in that so appreciate y'all thank right. you we got to go to a break come back there got news that you can use stay right there get the pen welcome back to veterans issues appreciate kim and jennifer coming on doing the show today remember that may the 13th uh be at 11 o'clock they're going to feed the uh law enforcement 12 o'clock we're going to unveil the alabama law enforcement memorial and 6 p.m we're going to have a ceremony that's very moving and you need to be up there for that so uh, try to do this. 17th and Quintard here in Anniston. And uh, if you're watching us over in Birmingham, you takes you about 35, 40 minutes. If you drive uh, 75, you can make it here in time. Uh, the women's clinic is open over in uh, Birmingham, and the parking deck is 2415 7th Avenue South, 7th Avenue South. And uh, that's uh, an awesome building. The director was on here a few weeks ago. Uh, invited me to come over and you're gonna give me a tour of that so when I get to go over there I'll do it and bring back pictures so you can see what we're talking about. Yeah, it's, uh, we've got our own parking deck with 2,500 parking spaces for the, you veterans out there right there put that down in your GPS 24, 15, 7th Avenue South if you're going over to Birmingham that's where you need to park. Uh, again the law enforcement memorial will be built for the law enforcement week. Um, it's 
pretty doggone close to being built as we speak. And uh, we'll have that, we're gonna uncover it on the 13th, so you'll get to see that. We have 537 uh, Alabamian law enforcement officers that lost their life in the line of duty. Now, the way you pay for that, uh, you've been buying that law enforcement tag that we talk about here every week, designed by Bill Partridge, Oxford Police Department, and that revenue from that tag sale has helped us build this very expensive law enforcement uh, uh, law enforcement memorial for the state of Alabama. And we'll show you a picture of it here in just a second. There it is right there, that's the one. And that, that shield with a rose on it is a national symbol. If you've got that on your automobile, whoever's following you will know one thing, that you support law enforcement. You do not have to be in law enforcement to purchase that tag. And if you see the colors in it, it uh, goes with just about everything. So next time you go to renew your tag, Tell me you want that law enforcement tag, and that'll help uh, finish this memorial up here. And a portion of it goes up to Washington, D.C., to the memorial up there, but not that much. It's most of it here. Now, you heard me talk about uh, the bill for, about the veterans to build a prison, four prisons, for $800 million. Uh, some of the other television stations have carried, uh, have now done interviews with me. And we're going to continue on that. Uh, Senator Dale Marsh assured me uh, yesterday, which would have been uh, Tuesday evening, that uh, this bill will not pass with the connection to the veterans in it. Now that's, he said, tell everyone that Dale Marsh said this bill will not have the connection to the veterans in it. So that's a one mil tax for $800 million and the holding the veterans hostage, money hostage. And he's assured me that I can tell everybody that. And I hope that's true. And if it is, then uh, the prison bill will have to die. So, uh, if that, uh, I'll keep you informed on that. And uh, I told everybody I would let them know who voted for it and uh, who voted against it. And our local delegation here in Calhoun County, the only one that uh, the, the two voted against it was uh, Representative Barbara Boyd and K.L. Brown. And the rest of our people, Randy Wood, Steve Hurst, even uh, Lindsay over in center, and the lady from Gadsden, all of them voted against it. So we've got, uh, we've got some worries that our veterans funds could be attached to build a prison for Governor Bentley. And uh, I don't mean that literally to put him in, but I'll build him some four prisons for, and put Alabamians in a hawk for, for uh, $800 million. Now they say it's gonna be 1.5 billion. They more stay tuned for that. Pick me up on Facebook and I'll really keep you keep you in tune with that. This week's salute goes out to all those that's organizing for the uh, law enforcement memorial on that weekend. Everybody put work into it. We'll see you next week here on Veterans Issue. We're out of here.